Hey, well, hello, uh, Calvary family and uh, those who are in Facebook world who are tuning in. Hey, I just wanted to take just a few minutes just to draw some points out of Scripture. This week as I've been, been reading, I've just been, I've been challenged about really asking myself, like, of the value and position that Christ has in my life. Um, and it's not for the sake of, of, of bringing guilt, but even Paul says, hey, I constantly uh, take an assessment of myself. Like I, lo I look inward to have a conversation and, and to be objective about my actions in my life and, and asking myself, okay, I, I, I say that Christ is all important, but can I find it in my actions? Can I find it in my time? Can I find it in my, my finances? Can I, define, can I find it in my decision-making process of, of how, I, how I make choices in life? And I feel like I'm just so thankful to Christ that when, when he spoke to us, um, he used parables. And um, parables are, are stories that are, are, they're physical stories that are pointing at a spiritual truth. And I had a mentor who said every, every physical tangible event, as in everything you can, you can touch or hold, is pointing at something that you can't specifically see. And um, Jesus uses parables multiple times to draw out conclusions of in our life of the way that the kingdom of God should be, right? So as things are in heaven. So I have two little parables for you. Um, if you could turn to uh, Matthew 13, either in your phone or your Bible, um, there's two parables that are, are really side by side here, and they're really the same parable um, in one. And Jesus uses them together to kind of draw, draw out a point. It's Matthew 13. Uh, verse starting at verse 44 it says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and then he covered it up then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field the next one is the parable of the pearl of great value again this is the next verse again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. And I think the one thing we realize about par parables is that they're not necessarily moral stories, right? So I wouldn't say, you know, it's not talking about that you should go out and seek treasure or that, that you should be on a treasure hunt for the rest of your life. But the point is, is the moral of the story is that these men in the two different stories found something so great that it instantly reorganized their life. And I think a lot of times we want to personally be great when when greatness comes from recognizing the greatness of Christ, is that the reality of who he is begins to reorganize our life because of, because of, of value. In the first story of the parable, it says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And just like the parables, sometimes you have to dig a little bit to find the meaning. That those who take things on, on face value um, often miss. It says that the treasure in the field, it said many slight the gospel because they look only upon the surface of the field. But all who search, search the scriptures will find the value of Christ. In John 5, 39, this is talking about those who took Jesus at face value. It says, and the father who sent me bore witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. And you do not have his word abiding in you, and you do not believe in the one who sent, has sent me. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, but it is clear that all the scriptures witness about me. So Jesus is saying that as you, if you take things at face value, like you look in the Old Testament, a lot of how they were committed to the law, but in the way they were committed to the law, it, it led them away from the point of the law. In 2 Timothy eleven fifteen, it says, remind them of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good but only ruins the hearers. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed because he rightly handles the word of truth. That if we're really going to dig and find God, we have to begin digging in his word. Um, we have to begin going beyond the surface to really search out the scriptures um, for who Christ is and why he's valuable to us. In Isaiah, 52, in Isaiah 53, 2, it talks about that Jesus' appearance wasn't the type of appearance that would have drawn people to him. It says, He had no stately appearance or form or majesty that we should look on him or be attracted to him. 
So you realize in the scriptures, though, a lot of people met Christ, they had, they had different perceptions of him and different reasons that drew them to Christ. There's some people that believed he was useful um, for political gain. Those who believed that Jesus was a political force who was, who was meant uh, to bring about his kingdom there on earth. There's those who thought he was even valuable. Uh, they believed he was a, a prophet or a teacher. But then there's the higher calling of those who believe Christ was priceless. And they begin to reprioritize their lives to gain Christ. And so the first one is that you must dig, you must search the scriptures. The second one is we must reprioritize. When you found something of endless worth, it, it automatically changes your value system of the way you used to make decisions, the way you used to pursue life, the way you used to view the American dream. And the word prioritize, and almost in our generation and in, in our society with political correct, correctness, we almost see this definition of being wrong. It says to designate or treat something as more important than other things. That Christ, that when these guys stumbled upon the treasure in the field or the pearl of great price, they said this is more important than everything else. Everything we've experienced to this point has to take a back seat. I'm going to reprioritize my life so I can so I can search out and have this treasure. In Matthew 8, it says, Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave the orders to go to the other side, and a scribe came unto him, saying, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no way, nowhere else to lay his head. Another disciple to him said, Lord, let me go bury my father first. And Jesus said, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own. And you realize in those moments that these people are seeing, seeing Christ as, as useful and maybe even valuable, but not enough to just reorganize their whole life and follow him. In Matthew 19, very similar, it says, And behold, a man came to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? So you notice he calls him teacher. I would say that would fall into the useful category or maybe even the valuable category. What good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, why do you ask me about what's good? There is only one who was good. And if you enter, if you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give it to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. Does this sound familiar? He's saying, sell everything you have that you can have me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. He had great possessions that he valued more than Christ. And Jesus said to his disciples, truly I say to you, only with difficulty will the rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier to go through the eye of a needle for a rich person than to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So there's three points and the last one. So. The first one is to dig, which is to search the scriptures and do not take things at face value. That Christ's worth and value wasn't found at the outward appearance or, or who people had said in their minds. Jesus was a thing. He was an, a, a means to an end for people who had political bias, who, who were pushed in a certain direction, but they actually overlooked Jesus. They wanted something from him when Jesus is saying, hey, I'm the prize. So you have to dig you have to reprioritize and then you have to take hold. And that scripture about a rich man entering the kingdom of heaven would really bum you out except you realize that, that what happened in this verse that made it possible for these men who were seeking treasure to reprioritize their life is that they, they had an encounter with something so valuable. I remember in my life, I was just so focused on being something and I saw Jesus as a, as a means to get where I was going. I felt like um, 
that he was useful in so many ways and he was valuable in so many ways, but he hadn't become priceless to me. And, and there, were, there were areas of my life that he could get so far and then there was, there was areas that were off limits. And, and even digging through the scriptures this week, I have been testing my heart and asking myself those those parables that seem so simple have been so challenging of like, what does it look like and what do you do when something becomes priceless to you? And I'm asking myself, like when, when I feel God's spirit drawing me out of bed in the middle of the night, when I feel led to read the scriptures, when I feel the, you know, when I feel the fight between uh, uh, Facebook, eBay, uh, Craigslist, and, and the Bible, like, where, where am I searching? Where am I searching for treasure? Paul said this, I have suffered the loss of all things and I count them rubbish that I may take hold of Christ. And that's the third point, is that you must dig, you must reprioritize, and you must live in such a way that you can take hold of that promise. Paul said, hey, I don't want to be a guy who's, who's running a race in vain. I don't want to be like a man who's fighting with the air. He's saying, I want to live life with a purpose so that I can take hold of Christ and that I can, I can come to the heart and the mindset of, of somebody who's willing to wash feet and lay down his life for the cause of others, which is, which is ultimately what the scriptures describes as true freedom. Uh, I want to encourage you just to reassess Christ's importance in your life. I felt like it, and this isn't like with a, a pounding the fist. This is a saying, hey, um, and even writing this this week, there has been times where I'm like, Lord, I, I'm sorry for seasons where I've been distracted, where times where I've been drawn off guard. And I, where we're at right now, it says, hey, storms will come, but the wise man builds his house on what? The rock. He builds his house on Jesus so that when, when the storms of life come, when, hey, when coronavirus shows up, your pers your pursuit of Christ has not been interrupted. The most valuable thing to you has not been interrupted. So uh, just in that moment, I'm just going to take a moment and pray and just ask that you would have a moment between yourself and Christ and just say, Christ, are you in the highest seat of my heart and mind? Like, are, are you in the seat of importance? So Jesus, we just praise you and we thank you for your word. Jesus, we just praise you and we thank you for your grace. God, that in our relationship between you and us, God, you're the faithful one. Lord, we're the wandering one. We're the distracted ones. But God, I just pray in, in moments of clarity, God, through your Holy Spirit, Lord, through your wisdom, God, that we would recognize your value. You are heaven's highest treasure. And Lord, I just pray that you'd be in the highest place of our heart and minds, God, as we make decisions, as we, as we see our way through this, this season of what's going on in our nation. God, that it says those who have built their house upon the rock will not be shaken. Jesus, you are our highest pursuit. You are the highest prize. No drought, no famine, no disease, no war. God can separate us from the love we have through Christ Jesus. We just praise you and we thank you in your name. Amen. Hey guys, I, I love you and I'm thankful for you. And um, I am looking for times that we're, we're back together and uh, we're talking and worshiping, but do not let yourself be drawn off course. Um, it says, hey, there's some who didn't bear fruit because the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches threw them off course. Hey, there's peace in Jesus. There's everything, there's joy in Jesus. There's everything you need in him. So uh, do a revaluation and put him back on the throne of your life. I love you guys.